I'm going to attempt to survive the next 100 days in One Piece in Minecraft. My goal is to get as strong as possible. Meanwhile, every 10 days, two of my Discord members will join the server and try to kill me. I immediately start off by getting wood and going straight to stone tools. I find the sniper trainer in this ravine. He's the quest giver for the sniper missions, which is very convenient because now I have my first two quests. I head down to the caves to gather some basic resources. While exploring a desert temple, I find two golden apples. I head to a nearby marine base, but they don't seem too happy to see me. With several angry marine captains, I'm not able to last long. However, I do manage to get the Senriku, a powerful sniper weapon, especially for this early on. In a nearby village, I borrow some food from the locals. I end off day one by committing war crimes against all living things because I need their drops for my quests. I set up a base in the walls of this cliff. It's not exactly luxury, but it'll keep me and my items safe from the bandits of this world. I immediately go mining again, finding iron, gold, lapis, and most importantly, diamonds. I spend about two days mining, and by day four, I've managed to complete my first quest, unlocking me the Firebird Star. I also make myself a heavy helmet, which will slow me down a little bit, but it grants me higher armor than normal iron, and it looks really cool. I mine for what feels like forever, and on day six, I finally find more diamonds. Now it's time for Operation Get Back. The marines did me dirty when I came to visit, but now I'll give them a reason to get mad. I sneak in, knock out some of the marines, and start snagging their books. Then I run upstairs and take the enchanting table and anvil, all before making my escape into the river below. Next I unlock two more abilities, the oil trap star and the spike trap star. The oil star can be really good when paired with a firebird star, as can be seen here. After gathering some obsidian, I make another portal and light it with my Firebird Star. By sneaking around in the marine base, I manage to steal a devil fruit box containing the Kachi Kachi no Mi, or the uh, hard fruit. <clears throat> now I'm in the nether, killing wither skeletons to steal their bones. Everyone knows that wither bones are cool. After gathering a decent amount of bones and rods, I head back home. Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. With the wither bones and dragon bones, I'm able to make a dragon bone bow, sword, and arrows just in time for day 10. I'm facing off against two marine recruits. One has the chop chop fruit and the other has the slip slip fruit. The chop fruit makes it so Mir Levios is completely immune to my sword, so I'm forced to use my bow entirely to deal damage. Meanwhile, the slip fruit allows Yakubj to slip around the battlefield. I don't have the best aim, especially when my enemies are so mobile, but luckily, I can set up spikes to damage them over time if they get careless. I land the oil plus firebird star combo, but they were both out of the explosion's range. But another firebird star takes out Mir. Yakubj starts flashing some weird power, but it doesn't seem to do anything. After missing with my bow, I decided to take this into melee and finish the job. With the first 10 days behind me, I begin to explore the world just a little bit more, stumbling upon an ice dragon. Yeah, that didn't end too well for me. Well, you know what they say, if at first you don't succeed... And so I bottle its blood and combine it with my sword to make an ice dragon sword. I also take down a fire dragon and use its scales to make some pants. Then, I do some piglin trading. Wow. I raid another marine base and get nothing out of it. But at this point, I've begun gaining extra hearts, which is helpful. If you didn't know, in this mod, there's a stat called Doriki, which basically is your power level. After you reach a certain amount of Doriki, you start to gain more hearts and abilities based on which race you chose. Since I chose human, as I get stronger, I'm going to be getting the six powers abilities. At this point, I already have shave, iron body, and moonwalk. Later to come are finger pistol, paper drawing, tempest kick. And once I master all of these, I can learn the secret seventh technique. After completing the next sniper quest, I unlock the smoke star. This one poisons anyone that isn't me, so it makes for good cover. Right away, I begin working on the next quest, by getting a punch two bow and a bunch of cacti. Next, all I have to do is shoot down all the targets before they hit the ground, which is light work for a sniper of my caliber. Oh 
Oh my god, that was so close. I turned in my homework assignment to my buried trainer. He likes it here, trust me. Thanks to raiding some marine bases, I get three more devil fruits. Mini, clear, and straw. I decide to eat the straw fruit for the fight on day 20. This time I'm facing the wax fruit and the bomb fruit, a mix of high defense and high offense. Now in this fight, I'm really forced into playing a pretty defensive role as staying too close to nothing here puts me in range of his explosions and Stone can stun me with his wax fruit. In the end, these two marines are just too tough, and they end up capturing me. On day 21, I wake up in a prison cell. My devil fruit power is gone. It seems I can only use a devil fruit within these 10 day windows before they disappear. There goes my plan to just find an OP devil fruit and use it the whole way through. Later, I hear a ruckus in the upper floors of the base, and... I... I don't know who this is, but he seems to be helping me. We escape the marine base and I make my way back home. This man is Noon, one of the most infamous pirates alive. Over the next couple days, he teaches me the basics of hockey, but explains that I'm not quite yet strong enough to use it. He leaves, and I continue once again. But for some reason, there's now a magical dome around my base. Since the marines captured me, they took all the stuff I had with me. Luckily, I left my new ice dragon sword behind but now I'll have to get new armor and a new bow. On day 23, I go into a nearby swamp to get slime balls so I can make leads, so I can make sails, so I can make a spruce galley. And oh wow, is it worth it. it. Look at how much faster I can travel now. I spend up until day 30 on my boat and raiding marine bases. And I end up with one more devil fruit, the door door fruit, which I actually end up using for the fight on day 30. I'm faced up against the spring fruit and the string fruit. These marines are practically on my front door. This has become a battle for my base. I begin my stealth operation, slowly sneaking my way through the marine base, making my way closer and closer to the enemy. And when the time is right, I use air door to hide. Now they know I'm nearby, but are unsure as to exactly where. They meet up to strategize, but this is when I strike. I miss my initial attack, so I cover the area with smoke to give me cover. They decide to attack me from below, and caught in a dragon twister, I have to run for now. Once again, they don't know where I am, but I know where they are. I land my new attack, Cactus Star, which damages them over time. Caught in another dragon twister, I run up the stairs. I hit one of them with the Firebird Star, and escape the building in the confusion. So I take this opportunity to turn this into a 1v1. I catch the string user off guard, but that doesn't last long. He hits me hard with an overheat. I try to force the fight heavily towards melee, taking advantage of my Ice Dragon Sword. He puts up a web shield and I shoot him right through one of the holes. He tries to escape and meet up with his ally, but I quickly follow. I cannot let this opportunity elude me. I get back into hand-to-hand -hand combat with him, and finish the fight with a finger pistol. I make it back up to the top of the building and start fighting the other marine. But tired from the battle with the string user, I have no choice but to run away. I manage to snag a book on the way out, and I make my escape. I return, later that same day, and scout the area. It seems the marines are out and about searching for me, so I take this time to gather my stuff and leave. I also check out what's in the book I stole, and it seems to be orders from the world government. The last two orders are a bit concerning. It seems the world government really wants me captured. I don't think I need to worry about that noon guy though. He seems strong enough to take care of himself. Once I've gathered all the stuff I wanted, I destroy what remains so I can leave no trace. Then I load up my ship and head out to sea. I find a medium pirate ship and decide to claim it as my new home. So I take out the crew on board as well as the captain. Say hello to my ship, the Dragon Soul. Speaking of dragons, I love fighting dragons. Check out this lightning dragon I battled. If you compare this fight to earlier on when I fought the other dragons, you can already see how much stronger I'm getting. I might not have beaten those marines on day 30, but I do feel an air of confidence now. 
Between days 30 and 40, I spend most of my time rampaging through marine bases like a raging bull. In one of these towers, I find a gold devil fruit box, and I unlock armament and imbuing hockey. Armament boosts my punch damage as well as certain abilities such as finger pistol that use the physical body to attack. Whereas imbuing coats your weapons and tools with hockey, boosting their damage while also halting durability loss on them. Imbuing also increases the damage of weapon-based attacks, including all swordsman and sniper abilities. Anyways, inside the gold box is the smoke fruit, which brings up another interesting rule regarding devil fruits for this video. I cannot use any devil fruit that has been used by, or will be used by, one of the other players. I also can't use fruits I've already used. Minor spoilers, but I can't use the smoke fruit. Before day 35, I found three more boxes, containing the spring, rhino, and light fruits, two of which I cannot use. I also find a hydra den. I fought the hydra for about five minutes before I give up for now. There is a special requirement to defeat the hydra that I learn about later. Then, on day 35, I'm ambushed by the user of the wax fruit that caught me on day 20. He brought his squadron with him, but the bomb user is nowhere to be seen. I try to reduce the number of marines as much as I can, but aside from my finger pistol and my ice dragon sword, I'm better off doing big area damage with my sniper moves. In the end, he actually gets taken out by a random pirate that just was passing by. On the ground, I find a wanted poster with my face saying that I'm worth 67,000 belly if I'm captured. Tired from the fight, I seek a place to rest. Up on the hill nearby is a small dojo. I walk in and the dojo master inside says, Ruff, you call that using a sword? You just swing that around like a Neanderthal. Realizing this guy just insulted me and then said he'd help me, I decide to accept his training, and I spend the next few days with him. I learn two sword techniques, Lion Song and Flying Dragon Blaze. The new sword techniques make fighting just a little bit easier for me, and I use them to take on a marine base, easily taking out a captain. Getting a gold box, then using a Lion Song to wipe out a huge pile of marines. And wow, this attack is great at doing this. In this base, I also find an iron box. The two fruits end up being the string and bomb fruits, which I cannot use. And with that, we've reached day 40. One marine using the slow fruit rides in on another marine using the bison fruit. Little do they realize they were followed by a fire dragon. Startled, they run towards me, but being the master dragon slayer that I am, I run in with zero hesitation to slay the beast. There's an air of mutual respect, but I know why these two are here. The fight begins and truthfully, this is where it ends as well. Now, of course I can last longer, but the instant that the slow slow beam hits me, I no longer can fight back, nor can I run away. Truly a terrifying power. But the gods smiled down upon me this day. Because of the dragon attack, and since I helped them, they decide to let me go for now. But I know that I must become stronger to face them again someday. <laughs> Maybe not. I begin day 41 by immediately stealing hay from a nearby village. And yeah, some marines try to stop me, but I'm hungry, so leave me alone. Outside the village, I get into a scuffle with a fire dragon, but like I said, I'm <laughs> pretty proficient at dragon slaying now. In the desert, I stumble upon a pirate trader from whom I buy a pirate captain's cape, which my Jolly Roger looks really cool on. Day 42, I decide to do my research in the bestiary lectern finding the page detailing the Hydra, and it reads, <clears throat> The Hydra is a powerful beast. Due to its regeneration, it is nigh indestructible. However, when attacked with flames, the beast's healing weakens. This allows adventurers to slay it much easier. Once taken down, it may drop its heart, which will heal whomever has it in their possession. The regenerative abilities of the heart increase as the holder's health drops lower. The Hydra may also drop its fangs, which can be used to make arrows that heal the user based on the damage done to enemies. <clears throat> so the next day, I head back to the nether and get some more wither bones. 
Using these, I make a new dragon bone sword. Then I head out in search of a new fire dragon. But while doing this, I find something else. This is a tier 5 ice dragon den. And as a self-proclaimed master dragon slayer, of course I need to be the one to take this thing down. It slows me down a lot with its icy breath, and it's tankier than all the other dragons I've faced, but in the end, I take its head, literally. While I continue heading towards the fire dragon den, I get ambushed by an overconfident marine captain that thinks he stands any sort of a chance. I finally reach my destination, but there's no dragon here, so I follow a nearby trail of fire, and oh, look who I found. I harvest his blood and make my flame dragon sword, or as I call it, Bane of Hydra. I return to the Hydra Den, and although I'm dealing good damage and it's not regenerating, I... I don't... Okay. Anyways, I realize that the Hydra can just hop in the water and make my flame sword completely useless, so as you can see, I begin building a bit of an overpass over the river. But the Hydra got distracted and moved further away from my overpass, so I just chased after it, hoping I could get it on dry land. I get it down really low, but it gets tankier the lower it gets. At this point, I am furious as it jumps back in the water, and all these goddamn mobs do not make it any easier. I push it into the woods and start going gorilla mode on it, and I think once you get into like 6 HP, you have to deal a certain amount of damage to chop off each individual head, but either way, I get it done, claiming 4 Hydra Teeth. Yay. On day 45, I'm raiding a marine base. While staring out of the hole I tore in the wall, I see two familiar faces. The bomb fruit user, nothing here, and the spring fruit user, my brother, blonde deity. Both of them come here seeking to take my head, as revenge for their fellow marines that I had taken out. Two men that have beaten me in the past. I leap right in their faces, as I declare that this fight will be different. I swear to never lose again. I recover a little bit of HP before jumping down and taking out Blonde Deity. Rest in peace. I stare down nothing here, willing to let him go. He sees nothing but revenge. So one last Tempest Kick finishes the fight. Continuing my journey, I find an iron box on a pirate ship, as well as some Sea King meat. While sailing, I find my first large pirate ship. Unfortunately, these pirates were pretty poor aside from the boat. So after busting up their ship, I just leave. On day 46, I unlock some advanced forms of Haki. Haki Emission and Internal Destruction, along with Future Sight. Emission Haki allows my punches and other melee attacks to reach slightly further while also doing a bit more damage. Internal Destruction deals slightly more damage than normal armament Haki, and Future Sight makes you untouchable for a short period of time. I also find two wooden boxes. At this point, I found a total of three devil fruits. They end up being the cage fruit, mole fruit, and flower fruits, and I am not using the mole fruit. While using Lion Song on a zombie, I accidentally teleport into a dungeon. The mobs inside are really tough, but I gotta get something out of this, and I do. I find a Dread Knight Sword, one of the strongest swords in the Ice and Fire mod. One of the zombies dropped it, and I actually have no idea when, because it was just so hectic in here constantly. I open another fruit box and it ends up being the heal fruit, which is actually amazing, and I use it for the fight on day 50. At the beginning of day 50, I find myself raiding a marine camp, but eerily, I feel like I'm being watched. A couple members of Cypher Pole 9 have arrived at this camp, and now the fight begins. Two Zoan users, one leopard, one giraffe. 
They tried to get in close, so I rushed into the air, narrowly avoiding a dragon twister. I hit the giraffe with a life-sucking hydra arrow, missing the leopard twice. I collect one of the missed arrows before trying again, hitting a marine captain. I hit the giraffe with a tempest kick and start trying to take out the marines that are helping them. Caught between three marine captains and a dragon twister, I fire off another tempest kick and use my healing fruit ability, bringing me back to full health. I start melee attacking the giraffe, but the countless marines keep getting in my way. I use Lion Song into the air, damaging the marines in the process. I spread oil on the ground near the group of captains, then I jump into the air and shoot a firebird star at the oil. But at the last second, the giraffe does something to remove the oil. In the end, I take out the two CP9 agents together with a single Lion Song. After taking out the remaining marines, my journey resumes. At this point in the video, my goal between every fight has changed. For the rest of these fights, I'm desperately going to need a good devil fruit or else I won't stand a chance. So I spend almost all of my extra time raiding marine bases and ships for boxes. In between days 50 and 60, I find three fruits, Venom, Revive, and Mini. I actually end up eating the Revive fruit for the next fight, but its abilities don't take effect until I die, so it actually doesn't really get any use. And that is quite literally everything interesting that happened between days 50 and day 60. In a field, I'm attacked and trapped in a cage. My opponents hold the cage fruit and the smoke fruit, my first Logia-type enemy. Which is good, because I have hockey. The intensity of the fight allows me to unlock my ultimate 6 powers technique, 6 king gun. Combined with full body hockey and internal destruction, I can deal major damage to anybody now. And on day 66, I unlock conqueror's hockey, and demonstrate it on this stupid skeleton. At this point I have 9 devil fruits that I'm not allowed to use, and 8 that I can use. But aside from venom and clear, none of them are all that good. This random marine captain put his life on the line protecting this chest, and inside is a golden box, so this has got to be a good one, right? Well, the next remover has another gold box, so hopefully one of them is at least something I can use. And dark and light fruits. That's a neat combo. I can use the dark fruit, but unfortunately I've just never really liked it, nor have I ever seen really how good it actually is, so for now I'm going to hold off. Dark and Venom are probably worth saving as the last fight combo. If you didn't know, you could actually eat two devil fruits, but only if you eat the dark fruit as one of them. That's the only exception to the one fruit rule. I also realized that with Conqueror's Hockey, I can just knock out all the marines and have free reign in their base without any fighting, which definitely speeds up the process of finding devil fruits. On day 70, I begin raiding a nearby marine base. I think the marines have begun taking note of my paths and recent activities, trying to figure out where I'm going to strike next, because leading this base are two powerful vice admirals, Dune and Clutch, holding the sand and flower fruits.
As I look around the sandy, dusty remains of this marine base, I find a chest. Inside is another golden box. But don't worry, it's just another one I can't use. <laughs> I take out a fire dragon for the reason of because why not, before making a new door for these nice marines. I find another devil fruit, but this time is different. This time, I find the Roar Fruit. This is a powerful and extremely underrated Devil Fruit. Allow me to demonstrate. Ability 1, nothing too crazy. Just a, a, a nice beam of kaboom. Ability 2, can wipe out an entire marine base. And just like that, I got the Devil Fruit I'm going to use for day 90 as well. The pterodon fruit is amazing, and pretty much just what I needed. And so, days 70 through 80 are spent doing my usual for fun activities. War crimes, terrorism, extortion, torture, and tax evasion. I like to call them the Big Five. These are all the devil fruits I obtained in those days. And finally, I unlock Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. This is pretty much the best ability in the game, as most attacks get a huge buff when it's activated. On day 80, I find myself in a nice spruce village, but of course it's, you know, one of those days, so I'm not alone. Atop a nearby marine base, I spot two more vice admirals. In the middle of the fight, we get interrupted by one of the seven warlords of the seas. He seems to be joining their side, but it's really weird because it seems like he's helping me in some parts. I'm not too sure. Not very much happens between days 80 and 90, but look at all the devil fruits I got. Throughout the video, I slowly increased the spawn rate of marine bases and ships, and by this point I would go from one to the next, non-stop. Not that it matters though, because I have plans already for day 100. But first, I have to deal with day 90. Outside, there appears to be two other pirates from an opposing crew, and just like that, half my ship is gone. I know I have to hurry, I have to get all my other fruits before... Somehow, by a miracle, I wash up on the shore. 
I see my enemies, and now I seek revenge. With my ship destroyed, my stuff gone, all I was able to save was a single devil fruit. The rubber fruit. I ate the fruit with nothing left and nowhere to go. I returned to my old base. But when I arrive, it, it looks like a massive fight happened here recently. In front of my old base is a chest. Inside reads a message meant for me. It reads, Box Deity. We of the Marines are leaving this message to inform you that Noon D Creator has been captured by the Marines and is set for execution in 10 days. And we tell you this with the offer of trading his head for yours. If you happen to not find this letter, pity. I suppose the Marines will execute Noon and send the Admirals for you next. I head straight for the Marine base, Marine Ford. But I don't intend on dying. I'll save Noon by myself. I start trying to free Noon, but he gets killed in the crossfire of a fight. I lose my will to keep going, and I sink into the magma.